Welcome back to my channel. I have a beautiful Lake Superior stone here. It's much smoother on this side, so I'm going to paint this side. It's about five and a half inches long. And look at this mess that I made. Just make a circle and just know that these are going to be little flowers. I'm going to show you how to do all this. Just try and keep it circular because we are going to paint some beautiful hydrangea flowers today. A little bouquet, if you will. I love you guys. That's why I'm trying really hard to get some cool tutorials out for you. I have a request for a cat, so I think I'm going to paint a cat uh, very soon because um, I've had a few requests for, for a cat, so I might do that. Um, please give me your ideas in the comments. I'm trying very hard to stay inspired through my stressful time. Um, and as you know, painting is therapy, art therapy, um, makes you feel happy. So yeah, throw your ideas in the comments and I'll see what I can come up with. Um, so I'm using perfect purple. Uh, you can use any color you want to do your hydrangeas because they do come in a variety of colors. Um, now I'm doing kind of like, <laughs> here we go with our non-technical terms at Rachel's Rocks University. We're going to make soft diamonds, like little soft diamond petals. Okay, so they're not pointy, sharp diamonds. They're soft diamond shaped petals. Um, that's, <laughs> that's all I got for you. Um, and then I'm taking a, a blending brush, which I do have a tutorial for. You can make blending brushes of all sizes. Um, I'm using a bigger one for obviously the insides of these petals. I'm just kind of sponging out. You can also use a very small sponge, just kind of getting rid of the brush strokes again, because I don't like them in everything. I don't, I do utilize brush strokes for, for instance, like pet fur, animal fur, um, certain petals on flowers and stuff, I will keep the brush strokes. It just depends on what I'm painting, but a lot of times I like to sponge away those brush strokes and have like a smoother surface. So it's kind of blurry right now and it's kind of far away. You can't really see what I'm doing, but I promise you I'm not hiding anything secret. I'm still working on my soft diamonds in purple. <laughs> um, and I'm making flowers of all different sizes. Uh, and it's kind of looks like a big old purple mess, right? It's hard to see. That's why I've sponged out. The centers are a little bit lighter in my petals, so I can kind of see where my petals are. Um, but now I've mixed blue, like a dark blue called sapphire, um, with this perfect purple to come up with a different shade of purple, a purplish blue. Um, and I'm just kind of going around the edges of some of my petals and then taking a little blending brush, a smaller one, like you can see me dib dabbing away there, um, just kind of blending in that blue, that bluish purple around the edges of the petals. I want them to be like a darker, a darker shade around the petals. So this is a bit of a long process. Um, and be patient with yourself because it does look like a mess at times. Like, oh my gosh, how am I even going to find the petals now? It just looks all the same color. But use your imagination. And then eventually we're going to outline our petals with black. Um, I'm going to shock you, I think, on this one. I'm not using any gold on this rock today. And that is a huge thing. Um, I think I have like close to 300 videos. Maybe I do have 300 videos. I don't even know. Somebody tell me. Um, and I'm pretty sure I've used gold in every single one. But I didn't even sign my initials on this rock with gold. Like I'm actually quite upset. I'm, I'm almost feeling sad for gold right now. <laughs> I might have to overdo it on the next one. I'm going to just completely overdo it. 
Um, so here's that little blending brush I was talking about. It's it's the same way one as the bigger one, um, only it's much smaller. It does the same thing. It's like a little spongy thing. Um, and what I'm doing now is now that I've I've kind of got all my petals with a little bit of blue around the edges, I'm letting that dry and I'm working on the centers of the flowers. So this is going to help even more with finding your flowers because we're going to be able to see the center of them. Now I'm very, um, you can't see, but I keep wiping the paint off on my sleeve because that's where I wipe paint. Well, I'm not going to tell you where I wipe my paint. It's everywhere um, on my body. Uh, luckily, I'm single and no one has to see it because if I took my clothing off, <sighs> they would see a lot of strange sponge marks and paintbrush marks and, and paint dribbles and, and stuff that shouldn't be there. I am very colorful and have to keep that in mind every time summer comes along. And I'm wearing less clothing when I leave the house. Like I'm not just wearing a paint hoodie and I, I take it off. I go out in a tank top and I've got like splotches of paint on my shoulders and stuff. It's so weird, but yeah, I'm an artist. <laughs> leave me alone. So now you can kind of see those flowers because you sponged out the centers with a little bit of white. And like I said, I'm using very small amount of white paint. I was wiping most of it off on my sleeve and sponging it out like really, really carefully. They kind of look like they're glowing now. So even closer to finding all your flowers is putting that center dot in each one with black paint and let that dry real good. You don't want to like swipe your sleeve over top of this right now because it would just break my heart. Um, or a cattail to like come and sit on my desk and like just whoosh, right over it. Oh my Lord. Good thing they have nine lives, I tell you. Um, so now basically I'm finding my soft diamonds again in black. And make sure the smaller flowers sit on top of the bigger flowers. Um, so you have to outline it appropriately. You've got kind of do some brain work when you're outlining to make sure that you're not outlining the wrong part and then it doesn't look right or that flower should have been sitting on top of that flower or you just just eye it up before you work on it um and uh, I mean obviously if you make a mistake you can always go back over it with white let it dry um, go back over it with white and then repaint that area. It does take time and it's boring and it's kind of, you know, kind of sucks, but uh, it can be fixed. It can. Um, now you can see in between some of those flowers, I just kind of sponged on a little bit of that bluish purple color, just kind of put it in the background so it doesn't look so empty. Um, we're not going to worry about that. You're not even going to notice that that's not that that's not important i promise you it's not even going to matter as long as you don't have big spaces um but i just kind of like sponged in a little bit of color so it looks like maybe there's flowers behind there right leave something to the imagination um but it's just the way my mind works and hopefully some of y'all have the same kind of thinking <laughs> Um, make sure you wait till it's dry before you start erasing any pencil stuff that's left over that you might have left there. Um, don't want to mess anything up with your eraser. Next, I'm putting in some moon yellow. Make sure your black dots are dry before you do this, please. You do not want to marbleize the black and the yellow together because you're not going to get that bright yellow look. Um, make sure you don't cover up that black completely, though. Just do... A dot inside the black because you still want to see that black outline now for some Cayman blue these are starting to look like flowers I'm thinking now I'm using my fine lining brush and I'm just kind of doing little sprigs sprigs of hair <laughs> sprigs of Cayman blue or aqua aqua looks nice um, you can do whatever color you want by the way these are just you guys know if you've been here for any length of time, I love purple. Um, so when I see hydrangeas, I think of purple. 
and I saw a really cool tattoo of hydrangeas, so it inspired me, plus the sunny weather and the birds chirping and getting a little bit of a tan on my face has made me want to paint flowers. <laughs> spring is sprung, people. Rachel's spring is sprung. Um, so yeah, I'm just putting individual little sprigs of blue in each one, being careful not to get that on the center, on the yellow. And uh, a little looks nice. You don't have to go overboard with it. Just a little. And then I'm going to make sure that everything is outlined. I haven't gone over anything, haven't smudged anything. I'm just going to make sure it looks the way I want it to. And of course, erase any outer bits of pencil that might be noticeable still to the human eye who may be very critical. Um, and I'm putting like imaginary petals in the background by outlining the blue that I sponged in the background to make it look like fake flowers behind there. Shh. You can't even tell, can you? <laughs> Looks kind of like flowers. I'm so far pretty satisfied. I'm going to be using a couple of shades of green on these petals or on these leaves. So that says thicket. Um, you need glasses if you can't read that. No, I'm just kidding. It's my, it's my camera. It's not you. It's me. It's not you. It's me. Classic green. And, um, but first I got to paint the, the leaves on with black because I think that's what's best. <laughs> I think that's what we're going to do. It's easier for me to stay within the lines uh, rather than just winging it. So I'm going to do, I'm going to try and do some hydrangea leaves. You can look up hydrangeas. That word, I'm not going to say it anymore because it's just sounding weird. And I don't even know if I'm saying it properly anymore at this point. So I'm not saying it anymore. These flowers, you can look up on the Google and uh, find out how you want to do your leaves. But I'm going to make them like bumpy and lumpy along the sides. And I'm going to do, you know, just where I feel they look nice. Then I'm going to let the black dry and I'm going to make sure I thin out my black using white. Now, because I'm using such a light colored stone, I didn't do white first. But if you're using a dark colored stone or a dark surface, do all your flowers in white first. Do your leaves in white first or it's just gonna not make you happy when you go and seal it. It's gonna darken and it's not gonna look pretty. If you want it to be bold and bright, do white first as a base coat. If you wanna keep your natural stone, you're gonna have to do all your individual flowers in white first, then purple, then dark purple, then the white again, you know what I mean. So I've painted my leaves white um, and now I've gone in with thicket around the edges and now I'm using a blending brush and going in with some classic green and some lime green. So I'm going to show you that process again here because that was a little fast. This is the darkest green, thicket green, and I'm just kind of outlining like I, I used to in a coloring book. I'd outline the edges first with the dark color and then go inside and shade it lightly. Turn the, the crayon to the side. Did you guys do that? Or am I just really a lot stranger than what I thought? Then I go in with classic green and then lime. I just wanna lighten up areas. You can still see that center vein going down the rock, which I'm going to outline again with black. You'll see, you'll see. There we go. Like I said, I'm outlining everything with black, putting that center vein down again, making sure my wrinkly, bumpy sides are there and noticeable. Might have smudged on the outside of the line with my paint, with my blending brush, so I got to fix that. But I'm also, you can draw them on first with pencil or you can wing it like I'm going to do. 
I'm putting all these little veins as well that are kind of connected to all the bumps that I put along the side, if you know what I mean. So each one is different. Each each leaf is unique. Each bump is, is different. Um, but you do you. You do you, sis. Uh, I'm just doing what I think looks cool. And this kind of looks like the tattoo that I saw. Um, and I really like that. I really liked it. So it needs a stem. So I'm just giving it a quick stem. I'm going to put my initials down there beside the stem on the right, but you're not going to see me do that because I did it later. Um, but it's just RM and you'll barely even notice that when it's done. Now, what do you think? Tell me what you think in the comments. Does it look like the flowers that I said I was going to make? Good. I love it. So I'm using Yuli watercolors. Hi, Jeannie. I love you. And I'm just doing like shades of like a goldish green and a little bit of like almost turquoise on some of the edges. And I'm just being careful not to use too much water. And I'm staying in between the lines. I'm trying not to get all that glitter on the black. And if I do, I'll go back. Hey. Don't get glitter on the black. And if you do, you have to go back and go over it again because you don't want to do that. You want to keep that black bold and noticeable. Um, it's very important. Okay, well, now you can just leave this like this if you want. Or you can be like me and, and keep adding and be a little more extra. So I'm putting some gel top coat on the edges with a fine lining brush. And that was a magnet, by the way. <laughs> I just needed somewhere to put my, my gel top coat so I didn't have to keep unscrewing the bottle. Um, so I'm putting a little around the edge. Just a little. Not too much. Just a little. I just kind of want to make the, the edges of the flowers shine. Um, because I'm not using gold. I think that's why I had to keep adding because I didn't use gold. But you're going to like the outcome. I really do believe that you're going to like this. And I'm going to seal it soon with resin. <laughs> so you can use different shades of purple or blue. I'm using a dark blue, which I can't find anymore for some reason um, on Amazon. I'm going to have to keep looking. But if you can find like a dark blue or a dark purple, it looks super pretty. Um, or you can just use light blue. But see that? There's like a nice chrome blue on the edges and it just gives it that little that little oomph I, I don't know what that even means it just makes it look nicer in my opinion and then I use a desk broom and I brush all that excess stuff off so it doesn't sit on the rock anywhere and it's ready oh it's ready for resin I'm very excited to show it to you resin that watercolor glistens nicely on the leaves gives it a totally different effect from the rest of the flower uh i gotta say this might be one of my favorites i happen to love it thoroughly what do you guys think <laughs> i'm excited to show it to you resin stay tuned well, I actually have something to show you at my desk this time. I don't have very much, but this is the symbol for new beginnings. And I'm actually going to be making a tutorial for you either tomorrow or the next day will be posted. It's already done uh, so that you guys can do this awesome symbol of new beginnings. Yeah, um, but that's all I had to show you. There's my signature. Look at that. Look at how beautiful that turned out. The rock itself is gorgeous. It's changed quite a bit after putting it, it in a resin bath. Um, look at the watercolor. Oh my gosh. I love it. You can see the little bit of chrome on the edge of those petals. It looks so pretty. Um, I might be in love, you guys. Finally. Finally. It's beautiful. We need to celebrate it. 
Um, let me know what you think. Don't forget uh, how much I appreciate you. There's a list of people um, at the end of this video that I want to thank. I'm only going to put your first name. Um, but those people have sent me a donation of some kind, whether it was through my Amazon wish list for the first time or through PayPal. So I'm going to thank each one of you. Thank you to all of these people uh, so much. I'm, I'm not going to name off all your names. Um, I did for privacy reasons not put your last names up there, but you know who you are. Um, there are more from uh, like the middle of uh, March at the beginning of March, but I will thank you guys after in the next video. I appreciate all the help and any donations. It's going to uh, keep me painting. So I just want to thank you guys for really being there for me through this hard time and uh, keeping me inspired and keeping me hopeful. Um, it really has helped us out a lot, me and my, my little guy here. So thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Um, hit the like button, share it, and paint with me. I'm going to be here again very soon when you're ready to come back and paint with me. I hope this was fun. Um, let me know. Don't forget, I need your ideas. Love you guys. Bye.